Hi folks, welcome to my review. Been been a while since I've done one. Um, today I've got the brand new, recently released EO13 Plus, made by Esheen. Uh, what we got? We got um, turtle mode. We got uh, free flight modes, um, which is uh, macro. Uh, sorry, acro. Um, stabilized uh, two different versions you got um, slow stabilization and then you got a fast one um, you got a channel adjustable controller which I'll go through in a bit 5.8 G image transmission 100 TVL camera um, four blade props and the motor is uh, a 0820 which is quite big um, 25 milliwatt FPV camera, which is switchable down to um, 2 point, uh, 0.1 um, milliwatt, which is your sort of like a uh, pit pit mode if you if you like. And um, we've got a one key takeoff, which is really a fail safe um, and a, a start engine start, really. To be fair, um, what else have we got on here? Uh, yeah, I think I've gone through. It says here smart audio, but um, I'm not too sure about that. Right, well, that's right. Well, let, let's just get into it anyway. It says quite a few bits on there, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. And this is an 85 millimeter um, quad. As I said, it's got uh, acro and everything on it. Now I, I did a I did a little mod on here. Now trans the transmitter they reckon is 120 meters um, range, but what I did was I, I drilled a little hole in the canopy there and stuck my aerial through. It's something I do in all my little quads. Uh, you've got the camera there. Now. It is tilted slightly, and a lot of people uh, that reviewed this says it's not adjustable. Well, that's not strictly true. Um, if you if you undo those two little nuts there, or two little screws that hold the canopy on, it clips on at the back. If you take them off, the camera sits on a plastic ramp. It's a, it's a VTX type camera, it's not an all-in-one, and it sits on a plastic ramp. Um, which is kind of um, sprung loaded. When you screw when you screw the canopy back on, what it does is it pushes the whole camera and the housing back down. But when you undo the two screws, it springs back up again on this on this ramp that's in there. And uh, if you wanted to adjust the camera, then what you have to do is you have to take the two screws out there. And the front will lift up under the pressure of the uh, the ramp, the plastic ramp, and it will give you um, a bit more angle on the camera. Because a lot of people have been saying, like, when when you're on extreme mode like that, then uh, all you get is ground. So um, yeah, if you do, if you take them two screws off, you it, it, you can actually have the camera all the way up so that it's actually hitting on that bar there. I know because I've already tried it. Um, but just just for the uh, purpose of doing um, slow flying and everything like that, I've screwed it back down just just so that you can whiz around. It's only really on fast mode where you're really pitching forward quite a lot that um, you know that I've done. You know that that you're going to need to adjust it. But for slow flying about and not gentle FPV, it's best just to leave it as it is. Um, Plastic's very uh, springy. It's uh, it feels very weak, but um, it it does feel it does feel quite strong. Uh, these props now, um, you get four bladed props. Now I've got two sets of four bladed props, but on some people they've been getting uh, one that's uh, three bladed, and of course on a three bladed prop you can't do turtle mode. So, uh, but these look like gem fans, or probably King Kong. Well, the King Kong used gem fans anyway. But yeah, they, uh, 
the thing you have to watch out for when you get these is the props um, aren't very aren't pushed in very tight. Uh, these these actually were, but a lot of people have been saying that the the props fly off as soon as they start the motors. But um, my, mine were okay. I I do out of habit push them down just just before I start the motors anyway out of habit. So um, yeah, you get a 500 milliamp an hour battery. Well, I I got the version where you get three of them with it, and uh, they're one S. And they last, they're supposed to last about, well, about five minutes. Um, they're, they're 25C, which ain't a lot, but, you know, well, there's, um, I forgot to mention, there are two versions of this quadcopter. They do the white one, and they do, uh, I don't know if you can, you can see that, but they do a red one as well. But um, the reason I got white, is because if I lose this in grass, it's going to be a lot easier to see. You know, being white and everything. Right, so there's, there's that. I think I've gone through the whole lot. Um, I did that mod to the area, as I say, just in case you don't get... Um, you don't get the stated 120. Because that seems quite a lot, 120 metres on four batteries. Which, by the way, go in here. You've got two pods there. And they take the AAA batteries. Uh, you have to unscrew them, but you get a screwdriver with it. I'll show you what you get with it anyway. Let's get rid of all this. Oh, you get that with it as well. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's just show you what you get in the box. You get the instructions. It's just quite good English, quite comprehensive. It's in colour as well. So, actually. Really nice effort, really, really good instruction manual. Tells you everything you need to know. You get a screwdriver, which you're going to need for the battery and the camera. Uh, and you get, as I said, you, I I got the the four plated props, props, which is the same as the um, ones that are already in there. And you get a USB charger, which um, right, has the uh, low C connector that just connects in there. I, I won't be using this, I'll use a professional um, hobby grade charger. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention, yeah, it is, uh, is a low C connector, which, which um, is quite common, and the batteries are quite common as well. They're only, you know, they, these are just tabs, it's so that you can pull the, pull the um, battery out, because it's, it, it's quite awkward trying to get it through the second part on here you have to kind of bend the quadcopter a little bit to get it to go in right so yeah that's that's all that get rid of that for a minute right now you get this with it this is a phone holder and it goes in in here like that and then it you got a, like a tab at the back there which just connects up and you can you can put a phone in there although it doesn't go very high it's uh Quite, quite cheap to be honest but um, yeah you can put a phone in there and you can do your FPV through that or whatever but I won't be using that now you got a controller now you you can you can um, change your channels and your um, band by using these buttons I shall switch it on you got your you got your lights there that's that's to bind it. That's to calibrate the, the uh, gyros. You got three modes here. You got that's the second rate. It was on first rate, and then you got your third one, which is acro. That's now in acro. I put it back. The one now you got this button here that arms and disarms your motor. But if you hold it down for more than three seconds, this will go in turtle mode. Uh, of, I don't think it's going to do turtle mode on, but we shall try. Right, so that's that's the quadcopter on. Oh, I better switch the controller back on, I suppose. Better bind it properly. There you go. You've got a solid solid red light on there. Now, if I press this, that's your. So that really, that's just an arm and disarm button, and then you land upside down. You hold it for three seconds. Oh well, 
I told you it wouldn't work. It, that's, that's what, oh, I'll try that again, I suppose. I didn't realise it was going to flip that way. Right, so we're upside down. Ah, oh, it worked, there you go. That's your turtle mode. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? Um, yeah, so obviously it's not going to work on long grass. Uh, yeah, so you use your band, you use your channels and your band selection to get your FPV to work. These are these are trim buttons. You've got throttle trim and uh, like uh, your trim. And then you've got um, obviously uh, forward and back and then left and right. Right, you know. Um, this button here, although it makes a noise, it doesn't do anything. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Well, that is about it. Oh, it has got an altitude hold mode, but really it's a primitive one. What it is, you put that in the middle like that, your, your um, throttle stick, and then when when you press um, the, the the arm button, it will arm the motor, and then it will fly automatically to to um, the level that you got that stick so I don't know it's about a meter and a half something like that and then you know you do it like I said it's it's obviously it's not sprung mounted it's just um, it's just like a manual version of, of altitude hold uh, you know it's like I said it's primitive but the the, uh, the camera you got like a little aerial that sticks out that sticks out there like that and I've taken the canopy off and it's, it's got a capacitor on now. Now it says it's got smart audio. And by having a capacitor on, on the flight board, that's telling me that it has. But um, I haven't worked out how that works yet. Because I, I've, I haven't really flown this. I only got this like a few hours ago. And um, I just put it all together and done my mod on that. And uh, just to see if it, if it works. And... Uh, it, I'll tell you what, it's, when you, when you, um, throttle up on it, it does feel a bit, um, lumpy at first, it kind of like, it kind of like goes up and then it, it wants to come down and then, and then like, then it sorts itself out. Now I don't know, I had a different battery, I used this battery on it and I was just testing it, I just jammed this in there just to see if it if it all worked because I had these on charge and so it might have been something to do with that it might have been that the battery was, was um, it, you know it wasn't balanced properly and the, and the uh, I, I don't think I um, did the uh, you know the calibration either so that it could have been that in all fairness so you know ignore, ignore that really because that could have had a lot to play with it but yeah, that that's the Esheen EO13 Plus. Nothing, of course, like the EO13 because I've got one of them as well. But yeah, quite quite powerful, quite um, very agile. Uh, I haven't I haven't actually flown it yet. I've flown it in here, kind of thing, but um, I haven't really tried it out properly. But um, yeah. You know, if you like, I said, like if if you want to angle that camera, you can. You just take the two screws out, and it will it will spring up. You could always put something underneath that ramp to keep it there. This is not going to flop about too much because it's held on by two little clips at the back. But um, yeah, very very flex flexible. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not because if you hit something, that these blades these blades hit. So I wouldn't really recommend flying indoors unless you're not going to hit anything. And of course, like this is too fast to fly indoors, so you'd have to have it on its first um, flight mode and just sort of cruise around on it. But it's, I mean, it's quite big, as big as my hand. But um, yeah, that's all the stuff you get with it. I don't think I've left anything out. Um, it was quite easy to get the channel selection on there. Um, the instructions tell you all about it. Oh, one little thing. I don't know if you can see. You see that little black mark down there? 
that's a hole now when you when you um, stick the screwdriver in there and you've got to hold it down for three seconds and you'll see a little green light you'll be able to see it through the canopy the green light will go off that means that you're in um, you're in pit mode um, when when you press it again for three seconds you, you can you can hear it click when you press it the little green light will, will come on again and it will stay on when when it's when it's all bound and everything it'll flash otherwise um, that means you're on 25 0.25 milliwatts and um, that means you're ready to go FPV so a little thing the instruction manual didn't actually tell you that it said that you had to you have to press the uh, these buttons down for three seconds well I tried that and I messed up the channel I was on and then I, I discovered that little hole there and that's what it's for as I said it's a separate VTX on there it's not an all-in-one that's just the lens with the back of the camera on it and then it's actually plugged into the flight board um, and then you've got another little bit with the aerial the aerial's got a funny little drum drum on it and this is this is the actual aerial that that sticks out that's you know I can't see that being very good at 120 meters to be honest I know 25 milliwatt will go up to 200 meters but I can't see that but mate, I don't know what that what that barrel thing inside there is it, it might be some sort of signal booster or something but um we shall find out because you'll be seeing a lot of this in the next few videos I'll be doing and seeing how it'll go and and how acro is now acro on here is very docile this is this is a you got to remember this is a beginner's um acro fpv racer i think i've uh, said that right um it's it's a very those it, it's proper acro don't get me wrong but it's a very docile one and the idea is to get people that are like like me that are getting into acro to um learn how to how to you know maneuver and everything and 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 do your flips and all that um but the second mode on here the stabilized second mode is um is pretty aggressive it's pretty quick i mean it's like that and it and well these these motors it, it will shift um so you know even if you're even if you're good at flying like um fast quads and all that and it's still worth getting now the whole package here like as i said like yeah, there are there are other versions of it you can get one with the box goggles i think they're the vr 006s um they do they do the complete package where you get all this and you get the goggles with it but the version i got was um the quadcopter three batteries or rather two spare batteries and one that you get with the quad anyway and the controller which is not hackable by the way um for 50 50 pound 50 pound all in now that's good for a brand new quad i imagine the price will go up soon so if you want to get one i'd get in there quick and that's on the banggood website they're doing these at the moment um, i think they got a 36 percent sale at the moment so um get in there quick if you want one all right well that's it that's my review on the eshin 013 plus i hope that's been of some help and i hope you enjoyed the uh it's a tutorial um yeah oh uh, you'll see you'll see uh footage of me flying this um in the next few videos and we'll, i'll give you an account of what it's like in the air all right this is just an unboxing Okay, well thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you later. Bye.